This is A Closer Look, a program about being differently abled in the 21st century, produced by the Community Council on Disability Awareness. Welcome to our show, Taking a Closer Look, Being Differently Abled in the 21st Century. This show is about the problems of and possibilities for the disabled living in the community. It is being sponsored by the Community Council on Disability Awareness of Wayne County. For short, we are known as the CCDA. My name is Daryl Green, and I am the host for the show. And I'm also a member of the Community Council on Disability Awareness. And today, we're going to take a look, a closer look, at living with schizophrenia. And now I'd like to introduce our most fascinating and interesting guest, Thomas Bowman. Thomas, I want to thank you for being on the show today and for having the courage to come out and share with us a little bit of your experience in uh, living with schizophrenia. And you and I have known each other for a long time. Yeah. And, uh, and you're also a member of the Community Council on Disability Awareness. Yes, I am. So uh, let's just begin by, uh, by asking, uh, where were you born and where did you grow up? Well, I was born in Richmond, Indiana. And then when I was four years old, my mom and dad and, all, um, and my family moved from um, um, Richmond to uh, Centerville, Indiana. And I lived there with my family till I was 10 years old. Then we moved um, to Fountain City, Indiana. And I would, I was, so I was kind of reared, um, raised in Centerville, Fountain City. And I was raised in Fountain City during my, more of my adolescent years. And then um, after my father died, um, well, in 1973, after I got out of the state hospital, my mom moved us, uh, my family, to back to Richmond. Uh, uh, so and you've been a Wayne County resident all of your life. Yes. And uh, um, how did you uh, first uh, discover that you had schizophrenia? Well, I didn't know what it was, but um, I started having symptoms um, around 1966 when I was 16 years old. <coughs> and uh, so I was around 16. I, I didn't know what it was until... <coughs> and... Um, I was showing symptoms of it, and uh, my father uh, uh, didn't know what to do about me because I was acting different and uh, very disturbed. So he went to a uh, a um, colleague of his at work at Belden, where he worked, Belden Corporation, and he uh, told me, uh, referred him to uh, uh, Elizabeth Anderson at the Mental Health Association. So my dad went and talked to her. And uh, then she referred my dad to Dumbbell Health Center. And that was back in 1967. And I didn't know what it was, and, but there was things going on I, I couldn't understand in my mind. And, and um, you know, I just had no recollection of what it was. So mm -hmm. I found out you know, after I was diagnosed, I was schizophrenic. So you knew that you were having some problems, uh -huh. but it was your father who really uh, Really uh, was alerted to uh, to this possibility. Yeah, mm -hmm. I and was only I was only six, 16, 17 years old. And eventually, um, it sort of spiraled down, and until you ended up at the state hospital. Is that yes, right? uh, that was back in nineteen sixty eight, mm -hmm. and um, that was quite an experience. I wouldn't want to relive it, but it was it was. I learned a lot from it, mm -hmm. and I was there twice. Uh, I was there in 68, between 68 and 69, and after my dad died, I had another relapse because of his death, and I ended up back there in 72, and I got so out you, of You've had a couple rounds uh, at the state hospital. Yeah. Now, uh, there is a lot of misconception 
about uh, what schizophrenia is, you know, sometimes people think that uh, <coughs> schizophrenics are, are, um, are having, uh, having voices or having multiple personalities or, or being very violent. And we want to, uh, be, yep. we want to be sure to uh, indicate that there's a difference between being a schizophrenic and being a psychopath. Is yeah, that true? well, the thing about, we do hear, we can't hear voices and see who have all this visual hallucinations, but um, we're not like psychopaths in that we um, were all of us are violent. We don't go out and we're chainsaws and, and murder people and with guns and, I mean, um, go, I mean, what's going on? The government is, uh, and and this, the, with the country was is psychopathic, fighting, you know, going out and killing each other, even for for oil and land. That's that's more. That's more they got more problems than that's I got. I'm organized a, psychopath. Yeah, yeah and, but there's a difference between psychopath and schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of us schizophrenics are misunderstood. They think we're violent and um, and um, and you know mean and cruel, but we're not. A lot of us are very gentle. And, and, and we calm. might point out that there's actually hundreds of thousands of American citizens who had schizophrenia, yes. and and by and large they're uh, living a peaceful. Yeah. Uh, lies in the community. Yes. So now that we've dispelled that myth, uh, what would you, uh, how would you describe uh, like a, a schizophrenic episode or, well, or stepping into that sort of state of consciousness? I, I would surprise, subscribe it as, as chaos in the mind. And um, it's, um, you, you do hear things a person can't hear things that have hallucinations on the onset of, of the, um, where, where especially my, my condition was more delusional than it, than it turned into to more later, in about a year or so, into hallucinations and uh, hearing things. And um, I needed treatment for that. And in, in my mind, it was complete confusion all the time. And I, I, it's like something was, I, I was in a maze, in a trap in my head, and I couldn't get out. Right. And it, it was hell. So kind of a cyclical thought patterns that yeah. go on and on, and, yeah. and it's hard to stop them. Yeah, and you just can't stop it. And, and that's why they have treatment for uh, medications and, um, mm -hmm. and, and therapy, group therapy, and individual therapy to help people through this kind of, this mm -hmm. kind of thing. And uh, uh, one way uh, of describing it is sort of uh, being in a state of mind where you're standing outside uh, yeah, well, yeah. yourself almost uh, looking, looking in, in at, at, the world. at what's going on. Yeah, and, your, your, your mind, it's not like split personality, but you're, uh, in schizophrenia, your mind is like split from the world. You're totally, mm -hmm. and you feel totally different than everybody, and you feel like you look different and, and act different and, and mm -hmm. uh, talk different. And so it, it's a total different way of, act, of being. And it, it, a lot of times, a lot of us in that condition become recluse, mm -hmm. or we don't like to be around people because, you know, it, it, you know we get scared. And I, I think everyone has had the experience of, you know, standing outside, uh, outside to yourself, uh, observing what's going on and feeling disconnected yep. from it. For example, if you have a, a severe accident, and you're going to shock or, yep. or, um, uh, or some other kind of trauma or, or even the death of a loved one, can uh, put you in that sort of state of mind where your thoughts are on one track and you may be in a room with other people but not really uh, being alive to the moment. That's what happened to me when my father died and when my wife died. A year and a half ago, my wife died. And uh, with schizophrenics, it's, it's, it's different. 
we we have a problem when so many guys that we love are we just it's like our, we become numb when it, mm -hmm. after, when it first happens. It's something Every, we can't. Everyone does. And, yeah. But perhaps uh, with the schizophrenic, it, it lasts longer. Yeah. And it may require treatment and medication to yeah. come out of it. <laughs> now, uh, we talked a little bit about uh, your time at the state hospital. And you were there how long? I was there um, once back in the night for about nine, 10 months, and another time it's the same amount of time, so I was there twice. All right. each, each time about nine months. You know, so nine, nine months is a long time to be, uh, to be locked up, but then uh, uh, I do were released, uh, you were able to live independently in the community. Well, the second time I was in the ho state hospital, I, they, I was put in a family care home Mm -hmm. And then uh, um, six months later, I was released. And um, so there and was a transitional um, housing opportunity. Yeah, uh, actually, while, while you went out the medications that allowed yeah. you to mm -hmm. be on your own. Yeah, I, well, I was I was living with my mother after I got out of, out of uh, family care, and then later years I moved out with my mom, and um, I found apartments. Uh, I found an apartment on my own. And, uh, now, uh, you're able to live independently in the community with the help of medication. Tell us a little bit about, about uh, your experience with that. Well, the medications um, help control uh, a lot of things. Not only, I was, I am now diagnosed, recently been diagnosed schizoaffective, but, um, but originally was diagnosed schizophrenic because I have a combination of, uh, of symptoms. Since my wife died, I've had anxiety, depression, and the schizophrenic paranoia um, symptoms. Mm -hmm. So I was, um, after my wife died, I had a, a multiple symptoms, so I was diagnosed uh, with schizoaffective mm -hmm. uh, disorder. And um, medications, help control my mind um, uh, process where I'm not thinking negative all the time mm -hmm. in, in the paranoid realm. And um, it also controls my um, anxiety and depression. Mm -hmm. And and of course, uh, so, so part of what cause, <coughs> can cause uh, a schizophrenic or uh, uh, affective uh, schizophrenic Disorder is a chemical balance in yeah. the brain. Yeah. And then these medications uh, attempt to restore that balance. Yeah. And of course, there are probably side effects to all these medications. Yeah. Well, yeah, the side effects are um, pretty much drowsiness. Um, there's different side effects. Um, in each different medication, a lot of medications have more side effects than others. Um, and it affects people, each individual, differently. That's why one person, patient, or client cannot be on the same medication as another person mm -hmm. because it might affect them differently. And it's, but there, I, I've had medications where it's caused me to, uh, um, you know, excessive coughing. Um, it's also caused me to, um, um, you know, like this one medication I was on, it caused me to, um, like, about almost like almost faint before I went to sleep at night. It would cause me to have like a, a reaction in my mind, in my brain, where I would kind of like uh, go into a, uh, let me explain, um, Oh, uh, and dizziness. Dizziness, but also um, I, I would just like almost black out. Mm -hmm. And so I, I couldn't take that medicine. Mm -hmm. do, do any of them affect your digestion? And yeah, there's some medications that affect your digestion. But um, uh, I had a medication. I was on Thorazine at the state hospital, and I, it, it caused me to have problems with stomach aches. So they, they changed my medications and put me on Melrose instead. And, you know, the one the seven elements went disappeared. 
So, so um, went to uh, were released from the state hospital. Uh, you worked with the uh, Dunn Mental Health Center to uh, get your medication straight now. Yeah, uh-huh. Periodically, that has to be revisited either because there are side effects that are bothering you more, or maybe um, maybe your brain chemistry changes and you need something different. Yeah, it, it changes. It, it's, it, I, I can't be on the same medication as I was uh, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm, I'd have, probably have a reaction to it. Right. So, I mean, it, it changes for everybody. Um, and like I said, now everybody can be on the same medications and, and that this person, there's no there's one, one, one remedy or one cure, one remedy. Um, well, um, now, uh, you have been able to live independently in the community and uh, what are some of the things that you've been able to do uh, with your life in spite of your uh, situation? Well, um, I have uh, been able to be with CCDA and um, work with them. And also, um, I, I, um, I've gone back to school. I'm majoring in psychology. And I'm trying to get what you First, you, uh, you uh, didn't get to graduate with their peers from Redford High School, but you. Uh, uh, yeah, I got my GED back in 1980. You were able to go back and get to GED, <coughs> and then, then uh, <coughs> did you go on to college after that? Mm -hmm. a, few, a few years later, I went to college, started college, <coughs> and then I got an associate degree back in 1996. And where where did you do that? IU East. All right. And and uh, and uh, what are some of your other interests? Uh, I like to write poetry. I have two books of poetry. I'll you mean you're a published author? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm and one you of those. Had two books of poetry. Yeah, mm -hmm. not just one, but two. Two, yeah. I'm working on another one, but it's 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 had some red tape. <laughs> it happens, but uh, I'm um, I like to listen to music. I like to listen to rock music, and um, classic rock. Classic rock, yeah. We're with all those hippie types, we were, uh, that's where my head's at. I'm still in the 60s. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, so you're uh, a published author and you read poetry. Yeah. Uh, also, also, I have a job. Uh, Dumbbell Health Center Employment Training Services has helped me get a job. And I'm going to be starting here probably uh, at the end of this month working. So. And I also understand that you, you uh, had a girlfriend and you got married. Tell us a little bit about yeah, that. Yeah, my wife, we met um, about 19 years ago. Um, and uh, we started dating and we got engaged. Um, we were married for 18 years. And then she passed away uh, a year and a half ago. And uh, we were happily married. Uh, we had, you know, it was like any other marriage. Uh, had its conflicts in good times both, and um, we. But, uh, but you were able to have you know uh, a marriage and you know uh, a family life, so to speak. Oh yeah, we didn't have any kids. we God didn't bless us with children, mm -hmm. but we had. Um, we were married. And we we uh, we took care of cats and. Um, um, <laughs> There are children. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So we had... Uh, and they are for many people. Yeah. Now, uh, what are some uh, types of uh, comments that people make that, that, that bother you? <coughs> well, um, uh, we, people, people, people that don't know me can think all kinds of things about me. I've been walking down the street, they can call me all kinds of names. I, when everybody says something to me that might be a little derogatory, uh, it's not that bad. I said I'll be. I've been called worse, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, so I mean, yeah, we. It, it's like uh, you get you get it all over, um, um, and and you, you you get you get frowned upon, you get scoffed at, laughed at, called names, and 
uh, it's because the medications were on sometimes cause us a little bit a little more um, withdrawn, um, you know, uh, kind of um, a little more um, less alert. So we act different right. sometimes because of the medication. So we get, because of the difference in, in, in um, behavior, mm -hmm. uh, we, we get a lot of flack from people. It, it's, it's pretty bad. And my wife and I, we were, when she was alive, we got harassed a lot. And we had to do things to um, protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like that's why we we had to rely on the the uh, the police department if we we need help, uh, mm -hmm. you know, for uh, like people if they're gonna hurt us. Or, it, it, it it was bad. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, you got to you got to realize that being sch schizophrenic is not it's not easy, mm -hmm. and and we're not. And the money we get from the government and stuff, that isn't. We're not just sitting on our rumps, just taking, accepting that money. We have to experience things that are hard and difficult. And we try to work, we try to get jobs, and we do have, or some of us do work and go to school. It's not like we don't care about ourselves and other people. That's not what it's all about. Uh, we're, a lot of schizophrenics or people with mental illness are very well outstanding people in the communities. Now, yeah. um, now, if you had, um, do you have any uh, words of encouragement uh, for our viewers? Um, yeah, I would say educate yourselves about mental illness and schizophrenia. And, um, and we have a... And uh, any words of encouragement for someone who might be struggling with a mental illness? Don't give up. And, don't give uh, up. Don't give up, and don't let don't let don't let it get you down. Don't give up. Don't let it get you down, and get help. And get help. It. Yeah. Am I right? Right. And if something bothers you, don't take it so hard. It's not the end of the world. Things life goes on, and we can't survive. Very good. Well, I want to I want to thank you for being on our show, Thomas. You are an inspiration. To everyone who knows you, you are highly intelligent. You've been able to rise above your condition as a poet and a published author. You participate in the work of the CCDA. And uh, you've got a lot of good things going for you, going back to college, getting a four-year degree now. Not everybody can say that for themselves, and you can say that for yourself. Well, thank you. And so uh, I want to thank you for being on the show and having the courage to share your experience uh, with our viewers. Well, thank you, Daryl. And with that in mind, I want to thank you for tuning in today. And I hope you've enjoyed our show. And with that in mind, <coughs> if you would like to have a copy of this show, please, for, for someone who has schizophrenia, or maybe what a copy of the show for someone that doesn't get cable TV, call WCTV, order the DVD, and uh, share this program with them. And with that in mind, I would say to you, keep looking up and God bless. A closer look, a program about being differently abled in the 21st century. Produced by the Community Council on Disability Awareness. The Community Council on Disability Awareness meets on the third Wednesday of the month at 12 noon in the community room at the City of Richmond Municipal Building. Copies of this program are available by contacting Whitewater Community Television at 765-973-973. 8488 or email wctv at indiana.edu. 765 973 8488 or email wctv at indiana.edu.